Hey, what's up? In this video, we're gonna enhance an old camera movement demo that I did a long time ago on my channel. We're gonna smooth out the movement, try out a look ahead feature, and add some optional pinning that could help with cutscenes. So if you're working on a game, I hope this helps you out. All the code is linked below if you wanna follow along. Let's get started. This is a demo I did on my channel a long time ago with just basic top-down movement. So see, I can move the character around with my arrow keys here. Now the camera movement itself is a little bit rigid. You see all the pixels around the character kind of move at the exact same speed and timing that the character moves. And there's definitely nothing wrong with that. It's totally a stylistic choice. But in this video, we wanna play with some details here to see how we can kind of smooth out the camera. Looking at the code here, we have some X and Y values here, and that's kind of the state of the character, like where are they in the map? And down here, we have some camera code. Now for every frame that runs, the character's position is updated here. With Translate 3D, we can cat this nice little X here and Y here. We multiply by the pixel size, and it turns out to be this nice position of where they are in the map. The plane that the character's walking in is also getting positioned every frame, and that's what you see here. The map element, transform, translate 3D. Here's a different value, and you can see that it's computed by the same X, Y as the character's position. So now we want to control the camera's position independently of the character's position. So instead of computing like this, the camera transform left here, we're going to separate out these parts here, X, Y, which is the character X, Y, into dedicated camera X, Ys. That way we can control each of them independently. So up at the top of the file here, I'll bring in some new variables for camera X and camera Y. And we're just going to start them to wherever the hero is now, so the game starts centered on the hero. We'll grab these and go back down to our camera code. And here, when we create that transform left, instead of using the X, I'm going to go ahead and use camera X, and same for Y. When I run this, you can see the game starts the exact same, but when I start to move the character around, the camera doesn't move. And that's because it's always updating at this X, Y variable, camera X, Y variables, but those values are never changing. So our job here is to take the camera X, Y and every single frame, move it a little bit closer to where the hero is now. And so to do that, I'm gonna bring in a new type of function. So at the top of the file, I'll paste this in. The function is called lerp, L-E-R-P, what? LERP stands for Linear Interpolation, and it sounds fancy, but it's really just an easing function. And these come in a couple different flavors. This function will take in a current value, a destination value, like what do we want the value to be eventually, and how long do we want to take to get it there? And it's going to return us a new value, a modified current value, that's just a little bit closer to the destination value. And how much closer it is is going to depend on how much time we pass it. So we're gonna call this every single frame and that's gonna gradually move our camera X closer to the actual character X. So let's come back down to our camera code and right above where we have those constants being created. We're gonna change the camera's value now. First, we can determine a speed to use. We'll call that lerp speed. And I'm gonna start with this happy value of 0.1. Next, we're gonna take our camera X variable and we're gonna pass it to our lerp function. And remember, we wanna first take in the current value, which is camera X, and then we want a destination value. So we'll call it camera destination X. This doesn't exist yet, but we'll make it in a second. And then of course our lerp speed, how long should this take? We'll do the same thing for the Y. Cool. We can go ahead and define these destinations now. So I'll say camera destination X, it's just gonna be X, which is the character's X. Now we can see what this looks like. Here's the code running over here, and now when the character walks, you can see that the camera's still moving to follow him, but it's just a little bit behind him. And that looks pretty nice, pretty smooth. It just takes a little bit of the jaggedness out. Now if we take the speed and play with it, let's say we increase it to like 0.5, you can see that the effect will still happen, kind of. It's just happening so fast you can barely even notice it. But if we went the opposite way, let's say we decrease it to a hilariously low number like this, now it's real slow and kind of sluggish. You can almost even escape the camera. The cool news though, is that since it's a variable, you could imagine how this could be dynamically played with. Maybe certain scenes have a faster camera. Maybe some have a slower, more sluggish camera. You can do a lot of creative stuff with this. Now, sometimes when working on a game in this style, you may want to position the camera that's kind of looking ahead to where the character's going. That way, if there are obstacles or enemies in front of them, they can kind of see earlier than what we have here. So let's try adding a little bit of a look ahead value. Up here when we're crafting our destination, I'll go ahead and make a new constant called look ahead distance. We'll call this like 10. 
We'll start with these temporary variables like look ahead x and y, start them at zero, assume none. But then I can bring in these cases that say, hey, if you're moving in the left direction, take that look ahead x, subtract our look ahead distance from it. So we have this nice negative number. And we can do the same thing for up and down. Now, when we set our camera destination, we can go ahead and incorporate these values. So camera destination x, we'll go ahead and add the look ahead. And same with y. Let's see this working. Now I've increased it to 20 here to kind of make the effect more obvious. But when I reload and I start walking, you can see that the camera goes way to the right or the left, whichever way the hero is facing. When I let go, it recenters on him. Left, down. It can be a little bit jarring, but again, it kind of depends on the feel that you're going for. And then that distance can be played with here. And if we don't really want the effect, we can just park it at a healthy six or so. And now you don't really see it. One more cool thing, let's play with pinning the camera X and Y to a certain location. Now at the top of the file where our variables are created, I'm gonna add two new things. First, a dedicated variable for pin to position. We'll start it as null, but we'll say it could possibly be an array of X and Y positions. So now the use case for this might be, hey, a cutscene's starting and it has to do with something on the other side of the map. So take the camera and pin it to that side of the map. And then when we're done with the scene, we can bring the camera back to the hero. Now I'll bring in a toggling function to potentially set those values. So it just says, if we do have a value for pin to position, set it to null to clear out the value. But if we don't have a value, go ahead and set it to this position right here, which is an X and Y. So the camera will stay right here, regardless of where the hero is at. Now to fire off this function, just to sort of emulate the effect, I've got this button down here, you can click it. I'll go to the bottom of the file here and bring in this line of code. This just says when you click that pin button, which is this right here, we're gonna fire that function off. If we find our destination setting code, here we go, camera destination, we'll add in a case that says, hey, if we have a pin to position value, go ahead and use that X and Y instead of all this tracking stuff. So I'm running the game here, no pinning yet, but if I click this button, pin, it's gonna go to that dedicated position. Now I can move the character around. The camera following turns off, but I can click pin again to toggle, and now it's back to the hero. Thanks so much for watching. If you're working on a game, be sure to join our Discord community. There's a bunch of people in there also working on games. They wanna see you succeed in what you're trying to build. The link to that is below. There's also a link to my course website where I have a lot of other video tutorials where we build games from scratch, just like this one, but even better, even more features. I hope to see you there. Thanks so much. I'll catch you next time.